Oh, behave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby! <laughs> yeah. Welcome back, folks, to Flashpoint Weekend Update. So this week was pretty boring. It was tedious because the marathon mission grind for the T-25, pilot number one. But I saw a few interesting phenomena during this marathon mission grind. And that's where a lot of players would play stupidly greedy or super aggressive with gold shell all the time. So you will see a lot of high tier matchup. So basically, if you're playing a tier 8, you will likely draw into a tier 10 matchup with all the players spamming gold. So <laughs> it was pretty rough, but you also will see that a lot of players will clusterfuck at a famous or easy choke spot or choke point or a good camping spot for a lot of flank damage. But as you saw with the initial clip, when I was playing with my bat chat, that little plateau is the flanking position to shoot at the hill at the right of the map. But everybody rushed there, so that became the main spot, whereas the big hill is the flanking position. So I had a great time. I don't know about the bukkake happening at the plateau, but... <laughs> I mean, if you're playing artillery during this week, you will get so many multi-kills because everybody just clusterfuck at one position on the map because they think, oh, I will get all the damage from that position. Everybody just goes there. Doesn't happen that way. <laughs> so yeah, meta breaking. It was hilarious. Play a lot of artillery this week. Got a few more bombardier medals. <laughs> it was so stupid. So here you can see the mission list for the T-25, pilot number one. It was initially pretty easy, it was alright, but it gets dramatically harder. So it's not as hard as personal missions for the Object 260, but it's a grind. So it took me about 4 hours per day, and yeah, I was pretty busy this week. But if you haven't been doing the marathon missions, you have 2 more days. So you get a 2 day spillover or reserve, just in case if you were busy. But I'm guessing tomorrow's marathon mission would be something like gather up how much XP because there are duplicates, but this is not one of them. So gain, say, 50,000 XP in a day. It's Saturday and eh, based on last Saturday and last Sunday, those missions were the initial harder missions. So, yeah. Was not happy last weekend because I had to work, so... Ugh. But yeah, this is the last two days for the marathon. And it's a T25, pilot number one. It's not that good of a tier A premium. It's a free tank, sure, but... It's no object 252U, so I don't know why everybody is so tryharding with all the gold shells into light tanks or into Hellcats. No idea. <laughs> so... Meh, but that's a mission list. And if you're not aiming for the tank itself, the rewards are not that bad. I mean, you get three garage slots in the end, as well as a few credits from the personal reserves and the consumables. You can sell those and the 100,000, I believe, base. So it's all right. So I forgot to mention this in the last Flashpoint video, but there was a recent fair play policy update, which is basically a ban wave on all the servers. So I was thinking that could the T25 pilot number one marathon be like a lure for a ban wave. So similar to the top tankers event in last November, that was the initial ban wave. So a lot of players were banned because they tried to rig for the top tankers event. So this might be a lure, but funny. Well, if you're going to have like both marathons to pull out the riggers, as well as the modders who use illegal mods, as well as rewarding players for the marathon grind, that's like killing two birds with one stone. I approve, but 
Could we have something like the KTTS or Curvettes one? Maybe. So who knows? So food for thought. So this week we saw the release of the STRV S1. Uh, it's a pretty good tank, but a lot of players complain that this thing is not a UDE SO3. Or it's not supposed to be. So it's not meant to be fast, but complain, complain, complain. So yeah. I've already warned you guys about the stats of this vehicle. It's not a UDS. It's not that fast. Oh well. Here is the T7 combat car with tentacles. So this is the Kraken version that's coming to consoles, I believe. Initially, it was planned for, I think, the Russian servers, but there were a few mistranslations. But it seems that this will be a starter package for the console version of the World of Tanks. So... Sad to say, I like the digital blue camo. So, mm, I like the camo. Oh well. But this week, the big news was the release or the announcement of 9.18 different versions of the test server as well as the super test server. So, we're supposed to get a super test server patch this week and ended the super test server today. But there are a few. Uh, lethargic issues on the servers because the three major factors of 3RD limit, new matchmaking, and new light tanks all rubbed, all gathered into one patch. So this patch is pretty big and yeah, there's going to be a lot of bugs. So we should expect 9.18 test server to be released next week around March 29th to the 30th. So, it could be like that, take it with a grain of salt, but that's the projected theoretical date for the release of the test server. So, next week, and that's where all the data mining will go. And you can see all the new tanks, hopefully, but there's not that many leaked this week. And we just got 9.17.1, like a month ago, right? So, meh. But here is the testing of the... 3RD limit per T, so they change the metal because these require more than 3RD kills. So, all right. And here is the one more interesting development this week. So about yesterday, I believe. No, three days ago, there was a no. It was yesterday or two days ago. There was a live stream with the Russian developers about different stuff. So here are some gatherings from that Q&A session. So light tanks for personal missions will stay the same. Premium light tanks will not be touched. So they will get the reduced matching making from plus three minus one to plus two minus two. Similar to medium tanks, tank destroyers, heavy tanks, whatever. New premium light tanks might be possible. So based on the new matchmaking. But for the Switch, if you're already owning a Tier 8, and if the vehicle is shifted to Tier 9, then you'll get the Tier 9 vehicle with the original crew at Tier 9. And you'll also get the new Tier 8 with the original XP earned. So it's a win-win. That's pretty good. Random battles, matchmaking will not be touched, so it will not become skill-based. If you want to play skill-based matchmaking, ranked battles might come. So it's like the rank mode versus uh, random battle whatever mode. So less, ple uh, less people playing equals harder for the matchmaking to find balance, obviously. And a few premiums might be buff but needs rework. Oh, I skipped one. So there are buffs that might be coming for the IS-7, T-44, etc. Or T-34-2, but it's not 9.18, so they're thinking about it. And a few premiums might be also buffed like the KV-5, the T-54, model 1945, yada yada. So it does need a few rework for those vehicles to become competitive again because the power creep. Enemy chat will not return because usually it's used for spamming like your clan or advertisement or just insults. So, I mean, 90% is useless, 10% is mostly useful, so... It will, not uh, it will not return. Potatoes will still run at the same FPS with the new graphics. So 
the new graphics will be better for the ultra setting, but for the potatoes, it will be still the same. So don't worry about it. There were plans and discussions on reworking team damage, crew skills and perks, and the new STI or ST1. So there were talks about it, but it's a large overhaul. So do not expect it in 9.18. And there will be a second set of personal missions. So, yeah, looking forward to the personal missions and new tanks. Just don't give us the old tanks. Well, I mean, I already cover all the tanks, so there's nothing new that you could actually add in there. But originally for the first personal missions, the tanks that were added were pretty new. Like they just came out and they just add that to the personal missions. Hopefully for the second set of personal missions, they do not take a year old tank and place it in there like the Caravans 1 or the T65 T T65 AMX 65T and just stick it in there so hopefully it's not that lame but we'll see so finally to finish off this week we have a new tank in the works so this is the T103 also known as a moniker of object 103 but it's not correct so basically, this is a modification of the T-100 heavy tank and it's like a brother to the SU-100Y, it's related. So you could think of this tank as a turreted SU-100Y. It's going to be tier 8 with only 100 millimeters of armor. It's huge with a turret, but the penetration is dramatically altered than the BL-13 on the SU-100Y, so it has the same penetration as a T-10 or IS-4 or STI. So this is a tier 10's 122mm penetration gun, 122 gun penetration. So it should be like 198, right? Or 190 something from the SU-100Y, but alterations, I guess. So. It's a large vehicle, it has no armor, but it packs a pretty powerful DPM, reloads every 10.2 seconds. Aim time is also pretty good for a Russian gun. Accuracy is alright, 0.36, but based on this reload, the DPM is about 2600 or so. And that's like the ISU, so equip a gun rammer, a vent, as well as maybe binoculars or something but yeah that would go up to like 3000 dpm plus so is it worth it to have the armor yeah i'll talk about it during the leak video but i want to see the actual hd model of it before we can talk a little bit before we can talk anymore so here is the 130 millimeter bl13 funny enough the BL-13 S2 or SA-2 on the SU-100Y is a modified version of this gun, but it has less penetration than this gun. I mean, it does have more alpha at 490 or 440, I don't remember, but the funny thing about the SU-100Y is the gold shell is AP as well. It has less penetration at 170 but more alpha at about 500 so eh, who knows but here is this box tanks brother I guess so it's a box tank it has a turret <laughs> it's at tier 8 I mean just make it with the same gun as the SU 100Y and place it at tier 7 or tier 6 with slight difference with the reload and stuff it'd be good no why place it at tier 8 where it just basically gets destroyed by everything it gets pinned by everything and it's huge with no armor so camera rating is god awful but yeah that's this week so su 100 wise brother t103 you have a live stream with some well, quote unquote changes, but we'll like to see the test server introduced next week. So wait for the test server next week. That's the big stuff. 
the tentacle monster. Yeah, that's one. It's TRV S1, yada yada. And the ban and the pilot uh, the pilot mission meta change. That's pretty fun. So there you go, folks. Flashpoint weekend update for the week of March 24th, 2017. So thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next week. Peace. Thank you.